Welcome back to the Dargo Show. Today I'm back at Forza Horizon 5, this time with a little science. I want to figure out, I've, I've always been curious if always just maxing out your tires is actually the best move, and if you start to get diminishing returns if you don't do other upgrades such as suspension, brakes, that kind of thing. Does upgrading your tires all the way really make your car like guaranteed better? So we're going to find that out today using the Ferrari 250 GTO. This car starts with like well, 1960s tires, so it's really, really bad. And it has enough power to do good in the straights, but its brakes and suspension are, like, kind of terrible. So I think it'll give us a good idea of where the limits are and if tires even help this car the further on you go. To start out, let's look at the lateral Gs. So this car actually does worse at high speed, probably due to its aero. Um, I think it actually, like, lifts the front of the car up a bit, and that's why it handles worse, but... 0.83 at 60 and 0.82 at 120, and its braking distance is just abysmal. 162 feet and 406 feet. But its speed overall is pretty good. But I want to go through and get every different tire upgrade. So we got sport, street, race, semi-slicks, and we can even put the vintage tires on this car too. I want to see if those are even worth using over kind of the regular tire upgrades. So let's hop to the upgrades and see what what kind of differences they're going to make for us. Before we hop into doing upgrades though, we got to get a baseline test for this car to see what kind of lap times I can get without putting any upgrades on it. It starts at the bottom of me class, which is actually pretty good for a car this old. It's got 300 horsepower, 2300 pounds. So I think with this car specifically, the tires are a massive limiting factor, the tires and the brakes, but we'll see how it does in the first run with no upgrades at all. Of course, I'm doing three laps, no driver tars, and clear dry weather to give me the easiest chance at getting consistent laps. Okay, so a lot of wheel spin off the line. This thing has really tall gears. And I can already tell it's a little bit floaty. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, geez, those tires are rough. So not only does it not stop, but it doesn't really grip all that well. Oh, yeah. You can see those tires are just struggling to do anything at all. Makes the car kind of entertaining, because you're always on the edge of its grip level. Ooh, you got to brake early with these tires. Wow. So three laps down, let's see what my best overall time was. Okay, we got a 122.2, so not, not super quick. And this thing overall doesn't drive that great. It understeers, it oversteers, it just like four-wheel drifts in the corners and really struggles under braking. All four tires, even with ABS on, are locking up. So let's go toss on the street tires and see what kind of performance gains we get off of those. Um, like I said, I'm not changing any other aspect of the car. I'm not making the tires wider or changing wheels or anything like that. We're just going to the street tire compound to see how much that helps. So plus 0.15 to grip. I don't exactly know what that statistic means, but with our lateral Gs, we're up to 0.91 and 0.90. So we've gone up a pretty substantial margin, a little less than 10% or a little over 10%. So hopefully that should help in every regard. Our braking is a lot better too. All right, race number two. Here we go. All right, this transmission a little rough, but already less wheel spin. It doesn't chirp the tires between first and second now. Let's see how, oh wow, the braking is so much better already. We can easily take this corner without worrying about it sliding out too much or understeering. That's a big difference overall. Yeah, this is vastly better. This car is way more controllable with this much more, it's more predictable grip too is the thing. Braking's still a little not great. So the uh, the brakes are not upgraded and they're from 1960, but just having the tires not lock up under braking is a huge help so you can keep turning and have control of the car. You come in here, they still lock up a little bit, but not nearly as bad. It's a lot easier to modulate the brakes now. And I mean, no trouble on the way out. This is a vastly improved driving experience already, and this is the first tire upgrade we've done. 
so that's that's a big help. The only issue is we've gone up 50 points in the upgrades as far as PI goes, and that's a lot on one single upgrade. But it does make a big difference to performance. Like there, I could not take that corner anywhere near that speed with stock tires. So let's see what kind of... And already, I'm almost beating the lap on the first run from the previous tire upgrade. So that's pretty good. Okay, cross the line again. Let's see. That felt way faster. I mean, we completed the whole race 15 seconds faster than the previous time, which is a lot. Let's see what... Uh, so I assume on average, yeah, a full five seconds faster in that lap, and that's a short lap time. So already we're seeing huge increases to performance. So at this low level, upgrading tires, definitely the way to go. So let's go in and get sport tires and see if we start. I don't think we'll see diminishing returns yet with the sport tires, but I think once we get to semi-slicks, that then we'll, we'll hit the uh, diminishing returns. Or actually, we need to do vintage tires. First. Okay, hopping in here. We're going to go down and put on the vintage race tires, which over the previous street tires, we get a 0.06 to grip, whatever that means. Let's see what our laterals are. Okay, so not a whole lot of difference. These tires are usually kind of equal. The, the reason to run a vintage is if you're just trying to keep it vintage looking and kind of have that old vintage feel. Well, we'll see if they actually make any difference over the other tires, like a noticeable time difference. Okay, so yeah, not much wheel spin there, which is to be expected. This thing's gears are so long. Let's see if these actually help, though. So into the first corner, okay, braking feels a little bit better regardless, but I, these almost feel more slidey than the previous ones, which is ironic. Although... It's a little hard to tell. They feel a little more slidey, but I took that corner faster than I was with the previous tire, so I'm not sure yet. We'll have to do a couple more laps to get a good gauge. Since the actual grip difference is so little between these two, it might be hard to distinguish the differences between them. Especially without upgrading other components, too. Well, I couldn't take that corner as fast. Normal is averaging 60 to 65 with the previous tires. Yeah, it is tough to tell. It's like corner to corner. Might feel a little different here, a little different there, and that's a lot down to the brakes just being <laughs> so bad overall. Okay. So we're at a 120 right there. First lap, though, of course, is really slow. So that is faster than my first lap previously. Come on, car. Oh, these gears. Gears are a big lap down. This is apparently a five-speed car, which I don't even know why you need five speeds, because it does, what, 130 miles an hour in third gear? Yeah, more than that. That's crazy. Okay, yeah, those brakes. Yikes. That's the toughest part to figure out on this course is where your braking point is. And across the line with the Vinch's race tires, these definitely look more period correct. And oh, I was faster, three seconds faster overall. That may be down to me just learning the braking points better and this course overall. But my best lap, 0.7 of a... Seventh of a second faster, so not a lot. But again, these tires are not a lot better than the other ones. We're only gaining 0.01 lateral Gs. I will say the street tires have a more predictable handling, and these feel a little bit more unhinged. So it is actually a more interesting driving experience over the street tires, but apparently it's faster too. So let's go hop in and get the sport tires. I think we'll see a pretty big increase in braking and cornering performance with these. Okay, well, that uh, grip number is not as much more as I thought it would be, 0.06 again, and we're at 90, uh, 0.93 and 0.93, so completely even at this point now. As far as looks go, though, I've always found these to be the least attractive looking tire, so that's kind of unfortunate. So we go from 682 to 700. Another quick note on the braking distance is we have dropped a little bit, but not as much as I actually expected us to. 
So our original was like 160 something feet and 300 something feet. And we're now we're down to 372 and 150, which is a definite improvement, but less so than I thought. So we're clearly getting hindered quite a bit by the actual brakes themselves. Cause I think, okay, no, these are four wheel disc at least like they're not drums in the back, but they, they also tend to fade pretty bad. Okay, here we go. Let's see what the launch is like. I don't know if this is actually improving our launch at all, just because of the, the gearing in this. Maybe just very marginally. Not that that really matters when you're just going for uh, lap times. Oh wow, okay, yeah, th these are definitely better. That was way higher speed through there. We need to take this flat out. Yeah, we are going much quicker overall. This, I can tell, is a bigger difference than between the vintage and the street tires. Even a, even at the, like, both .06, whatever that is, so. But this does increase your point value, unlike the, uh, going from the street to vintage. Something to keep note of. Much more predictable though in the corners. Like you can tell I can stop quicker and the car just turns in faster and doesn't tend to oversteer if I try to power through it. It just stays relatively neutral. So it's a pretty easy driving experience compared to the vintage tires. Can we take this flat out yet? Okay, nope, can't take that flat out yet. Or a lap time a little bit, but we got two more. And across the line, Overall, much better driving experience. This car's way easier to control. We are again three seconds faster. So incremental changes. And I kind of feel though that we're getting very close to the point of diminishing returns. It's again, second and a half faster lap time. So d a decent amount still on this track. But I think with the semi-slicks, we're gonna start seeing those re diminishing returns due to not getting a ton of improvement to braking. And uh, especially in the drivetrain, the gearing is just really rough in this car. And we have stock suspension, which tends to lean a lot, meaning that um, that inside tire in tight corners, you're going to start having issues with it just not having grip since it's not really on the ground. So we got the semi slicks. These are a, a much bigger difference as far as the like grip number. You get a 0.12 better. And our lateral G's actually go up a lot. So we go to 1.1 and 1.09. So that is a that's a huge jump. Maybe that won't be a diminishing return because that level of grip is so much higher. Our braking, is it down 25 feet? Yeah, 23 feet at the 60 and... Oh, wow, okay. So may, maybe it will, will keep helping because that... Overall is just a massive increase to overall import performance. Back out here, okay, this car just gets harder and harder to launch because you have to basically just clutch dump it and Forza doesn't give you enough time to do it. So theoretically it's faster, but it's harder to launch. Ooh, wow, that braking is way better. And we're a couple miles an hour faster through there. With the suspension the way it is though, I feel like this car is getting to the point where it's getting a little twitchy. Because the tires can handle the the weight shifts, but the overall body of the car just can't. You can see it like really dancing around on me. It is definitely faster. It just gets it's getting to the point where it's getting kind of hard to drive. And I guarantee with the actual full slicks, it's not going to be that great. But it, it is stopping quicker, and I can power out of that corner way easier. Much higher speeds out of that. Okay, cross the line again, and ooh, another nice improvement. So uh, this is more incremental than I, I, th I thought actually that it would be. I thought there would be a big difference in some of the mid-tire upgrades, but overall we're just slowly increasing our lap time. Another second and a half off there and a couple overall. Maybe we won't get diminishing returns on the race tires. I guess we'll have to find out. And the car now, though, is getting to the point where it's just tougher to drive. It's not necessarily difficult. But I actually liked how the uh, sport tires drove more than the semi-slicks. Okay, and our last tire upgrade, the slick tire compound. So, oh wait, did those not change the... Interesting. 
they don't change the lateral G's at all. D does my breaking get better? What? Breaking actually gets worse in every regard. My lateral G's don't change. Somehow I have more grip. I, I don't quite understand these tires. And they increase the point value by 8 points. So not a lot. So these might not really be... I thought these were, like, much better than the semi slicks but clearly they're not. Okay, last and final race. Let's see if we can get a good launch. I don't think it's even... Ugh, nope. Definitely into the point where the launch is just worse and worse because of the gears. So let's see if these even make any difference. Supposedly braking is worse, uh, and the lateral Gs have not changed. But it seems like we're going faster through that initial corner. Kind of confused by these tires. And semi slicks might just be the way to go. Let's see if this braking. Okay, braking feels better. I don't know why they. Obviously, as a lot of us know, the fours of numbers kind of lie a little bit on their braking, especially. Let's come to this corner. Oh yeah, this thing definitely stops better. Corners quicker. That, that was much easier to take that corner with full power on and as much steering input as I wanted. This actually is easier to drive too with these tires, but that corner, that's the, the one that's really tough. I'm surprised we're still locking up the brakes too with tires this sticky and brakes this bad. Can we take this maxed out yet? A little drift may have actually lost us more speed than it was beneficial, but we can take that maxed finally. Final lap out of the way, we have improved a time incrementally once again. Apparently we're not getting diminishing returns necessarily, but the handling gets more and more difficult and my lap time a little bit quicker. Not a lot, but again these only increase the point value by 8 points and don't give us that much more grip. I didn't notice that the braking was worse. In some regards, it actually felt better than the semi-slicks, even though Forza says that it's worse in every way. I think they're they're fudging the numbers a little bit there. But overall, I think running just going straight tires into a build is definitely not to play. I mean, obviously balance is the way to go. So I think for a B-class build, if you were to run like sport tires and then upgrade your suspension and brakes, it would be a much easier car to drive and probably give you better lap times. So from start to finish, we have cut off a full 10 seconds off of our original lap time of 122, which is pretty substantial, even though we've gone up a whopping 121 points of PI, which is a lot. I definitely would not want to drive this car the way it is in a race, because it just has a lot of faults. Like the braking especially is, I think, the biggest problem with this car. Increasing the braking performance would make this thing, I, I bet it would shave off another three seconds easy. As always, balance in a car is just the way to go. But I do want to do more tests on various other upgrade paths and see which actually has the biggest outcome for performance. I kind of think tires is the biggest one, but I could be wrong. So stay tuned for those videos. I'll be doing those probably on the same car to give us a good indicator with all the performance upgrades. And I'll see you guys in the next one.